Shalom, Shalom. Before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Wahawa Kakwadash, Yahweh, which is the one and only true name of the Heavenly Father, Salaki. Yahweh Shai, who the world eagerly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. Bahashim, meaning coming in the name. Ba means coming in, Ha means Da, Sha means name, Waka means holy, Kodash, Kodash meaning spirit, so like it, Kodash meaning holy. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect, and Shalom to you sincere brothers that are scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to you sincere sisters that's listening to silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka. Double honors to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and double honors to the elders and the apostles and bishops who rule well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Okay, and we're out out here another blessing day to preach the gospel again, and uh, pretty much we're going to be going into uh, There is No Own Free Will, the two thirds, and we're also going to go into Jacob's Trouble. Lord willing, if the Lord, you know, however the Lord uh, works through the Spirit. And uh, I'm probably going to start with the uh, own free will because you have a lot of, um, of Israelites, you know, a lot of these Jakes that's in the religion of Christianity, they're under the 501c3 charter and they believe that you know that uh, they have their own free will, okay? They have their own free will. They can do as they want, you know? They have uh, eternal grace, which that's not in the scriptures, okay? You don't have your own free will. Grace is not eternal, all right? You Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, you are, you are to be repenting daily and asking the Lord for that mercy, you know, and being under his protection of his covering. Because there's going to be a time where all hell is supposed to break loose here. We can see it with, with all of these uh, 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 foreign countries, these wars, right? They're, they're, they're pushing forth this uh, MOTB more and more and more and more. So things is about to pop off, okay? Things are about to happen. Things are about to occur. So you want to be getting your chances right with the Lord while you still can. <coughs> it's like, you want to be getting your chances right with the Lord while you still can, okay? You don't have your own free will. This is Proverbs 16 and 1. We we'll start with Proverbs 16 and 1. This is uh, Proverbs 16 and 1. Proverbs 16 and 1. And it says, The preparations of the heart in men and answer of the tongue is from the Lord. You see that answer from the tongue is from the Lord. All right. It's from the Lord. Right. Everything is of the Lord. Okay, it's from the Lord. It's not from your own free will. It's not from your own perspective of things. No, it's from the Lord. Okay? It's from the Lord. Let's read that again. This is Proverbs 16 and 1. It says, The preparations of heart and men, meaning the mind and men, the mind and men, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. See, so the Lord, men's goings are of the Lord. Okay? The Lord is the one that downloaded this into our flesh, into our spirit, should I say, to do the things that we do. Okay, the Lord puts it, the Lord is the one that sets it up. The Lord is the one that directs our paths. He's the one that has everything set up or what our lots are. You know, going back into the previous video I said last week, all right, this is why we don't have our own free will because the Lord set this up. He already set up your lot. Each and every one of us individually has a lot that we have to play out individually. It could be the be of the elect or it could be the be of a two third. Okay? It could be to be of a two-third. We don't know what our lots are. We just plan our lots out. Okay? We just plan our lots out. So I didn't bring my staff on back. Still kind of messed up a little bit. This is uh, Proverbs 20 and 24. This is Proverbs 20 and 24. Proverbs 20 and 24. And it says, men's goings are of the Lord. It says, how can it... How can a man then understand his own way? Right. Men's goings are of the Lord. So how can a man understand his own way? He can't. 
all right? Men's goings of the Lord. The Lord, again, the Lord has a lot set up for each and every one of us. We don't know what our lot is. We're just playing it out. The Lord is the whole director of this whole entire show. He knows who he, the Lord knows who his elect is, and the Lord knows who's going to be a two-third. See, the thing is that we don't know. This is why we pray what? Without ceasing. We continually pray without ceasing. We continually remain in the faith, calling upon Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Okay? Calling upon that name. We're trying to make that money like uh, an apostle or concept. We're trying to get that money. Right? What is that money? That the kingdom. Deliverance. Okay? That's that money there. That deliverance, man. You know? So we don't we don't wanna uh you know, uh, put that all in vain, you know, or all in void to, to do what we want to do. Because it's only going to lead us to what? Destruction. It's going to lead us to be destroyed here. We don't want that. We're trying to make, we're trying to, we're trying to make it on that, 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 that chariot, man. You know? This is Proverbs 20 and 24. Men's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? See, men's goings are of the Lord, man. The Lord has is the one that set it up. He's the one that sets it up. It's Proverbs 21 and 1. It says, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You see that? As the river of water, he turneth it whatsoever he will. So the Lord is the one that turns it over whatsoever he will. Like again, we just read in Proverbs, uh, what is it, 20, 20 and 24, men's goings are of the Lord, right? It's all of the Lord's will. Okay, everything that we do on the earth, that's why we say Lord willing. Because everything is of the Lord's will. Everything that we do on the earth is of the Lord's will. If the Lord's going to keep us in this truth, that's of the Lord's will. If the Lord is going to, you know, keep us remaining diligent, doing the lessons and studying to show ourselves approved, learning, growing in this thing, right? If we're going to make it to be here another day, it's of the Lord's will. That's why uh, 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 King David, when you read in Proverbs 51, right, he said in 51 and 11, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because he feared the Lord. He knew everything, everything that David knew that he was doing was for the Lord. He knew what the Lord could have did to him. He knew, he knew what, what chastisement or what the Lord can do. He saw what happened to King Saul, right? Because King Saul, he did opposite of what the Lord told him to do. Right? And what happened? Everything started going downhill for, for King Saul. When he started making his own choices and not the Lord's following what the Lord told him to do. When he started making his own choices. The Lord told Samuel to tell Saul to kill all the Amalekites, everything living in it. And Saul didn't do that. He did his own will. And look what happened to Saul. Look what happened to him. The Lord, the Lord took the spirit, replaced him with an evil spirit, man. You know? King Saul had an evil spirit on him. So you, you see in the scriptures as perfect examples of individuals doing their own will. Look where it got them. You know, I'm just using uh, 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 I'm just using King Saul as an example. He didn't do the will of the Lord. He started doing his own thing, and look what happened to him. So that can that can happen, man. That's why you want to fear the Lord. The Lord put an evil spirit on him, and the Lord chose David. The Lord set David up, but the Lord set that up from the beginning anyway. So, but just perfectly paraphrasing, showing you that everything is of the Lord's will, man. This is Proverbs 21 and 1. It says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the river of water. He turneth it whatsoever he will. See? Whatsoever he will. The Lord will. It's of the Lord's will. It's Jeremiah 10 and uh, 23. Jeremiah 10 and 23. And it says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. You see that? It says, O Lord. I know that the way of man is not in himself, right? It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. It's not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Who directs his steps? Yahweh does. Yahweh Bashima Shai does. The Lord does. He directs our steps, right? That's in Proverbs 3 and 5. And he shall direct your paths. 3 and 5, I think through verse uh, 6 or 7, right? The Lord is the one that directs our paths. The Lord is the one. Men's goings of the Lord. The Lord is the one that sets everything up. So read it again, verse 23. Oh Lord, I know the way of man is not in himself. It's not in himself. How could a man know his own way, right? 
The scriptures say it is not a man that walketh to direct his steps. See, the Lord is the one that directs it. So you can't say, uh, uh, I have my own free will, because you don't. You don't have your own free will. The Lord already knows what you're going to do before you even do it. You see? This is Sirach 18 and 3. Get that Sirach 18 and 3 out. <clears throat> This is Sirach 18 and verse 3. This is Sirach 18 and 3. And it says, it says, Who governeth the world with the palm of his hand? And all things obey his will. See that? The Lord, man. That's talking about the Lord there. It says, And all things obey his will, for he is the king of all, by his power, dividing holy things among them, from profane see is everything is of his will read that again Sirach 18 and 3 it says who governeth the world with the palm of his hand and all things obey his will the Lord's will that's why we always say the Lord willing I keep I'm gonna keep quoting that I'm gonna get that precept out in a minute minute right it's the Lord's will it's not your own will it's not your own free will you don't have your own free will okay it's of the Lord's will it says, who governed the world with the palm of his hand and all things obey his will for he is the king of all by his power dividing the holy things among them from profane. You see that? Everything is it's of his will, man. It's of the Lord's will. Not your own free will. You don't have your own free will. This is Sirach 33 and 34. Sirach 33 and 13. Right here. It says, as the clay is in the potter's hand and fashion it at his pleasure, so it says, so man is in the hand of him that made him. It says, to render to them as liketh him best. See that? So the Lord is the one that sets it up. You don't have your own free will, man. You don't have your own free will. This cuts everything of what people was talking about, man. You don't have your own free will. It says, I read again, Sirach 33, 13, as the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure. It says, so man is in the hand of him that made him. So man is in the hand of him that made him to render them as liketh him best. See? So men's goings are of the Lord. It's of the Lord. Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, he even came on the earth to do the Father's will. He said, I came on the earth not to do my own will, but the Father's will. Let's get that out, man. Let's get that out. <clears throat> and then we'll go back to that. You know, this 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 uh can always goes over people's heads too. You know, you can use this precept here, and it'll still go over people's heads. People will still believe. That uh, the Messiah is the Heavenly Father still. They still can't get it. This is John 6 and 38. It says, this is the Messiah speaking. And actually, I'll read up. I'll read up to 35. I'll start at verse 35 so people can see that this is the Messiah speaking. This is John 6 and 34. 35, so like it. And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Verse 6. But I said unto but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Verse 37. All that the Father given me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. So if the Heavenly Father, I just use that example, if the, if the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son are one being there, they're, they're, he, came as, he came as the Heavenly Father in the flesh, how? When He just said that He was sent on the earth not to do His own will, but to do the will of Him that sent Him. When you read John 3, 16, it says the Heavenly Father sent down His only begotten Son, right? So how could they be the same person? That cuts that too. So the Messiah, when He came on the earth, he didn't have his own free will. He came to do the Father's will. He said it right here, verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will. See, so how can you have your own free will? But the Messiah, he didn't even have his own free will. He came to do the will of the Heavenly Father. Right? 
It says, for I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Verse 39, and this is the Father's will. Wait a minute, I, I thought the Heavenly Father's only our son was one person, right? Verse 39, and this is the Father's will, which have sent me. They're two separate entities, but continue to the main point, right? That of all which he have given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall rise it up again at the last. So there you go. He came to do the Father's will. The Messiah didn't even do his own will when he came in the flesh on the earth. He did the Father's will. He's about his Father's business. He even said, I think it's John, was it 30? I think it's John. I think it's John 3 and 34. Let me see if I can get that out real quick. Is it John 4 and 34? Yep. Let's get that out. This is John 4 and 34. John 4 and 34. It says, Yahweh said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. There you go again. Who sent him on the earth? The Heavenly Father did. The Heavenly Father sent the only begotten Son out on the earth. And when he came on the earth in the flesh, right, to dwell on the earth as a, in the man, as a man in the flesh, he came to do the Father's will. He didn't come to do his own will. Okay? He didn't come to do his own will. Getting back to the point. So, you don't have your own free will. You don't. You don't have your own free will, man. So rock 33 and 13 again. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, it says, so man is in the hand of him that made him and to render to them as like it, us like it him best. So there you go. We're created on the earth to play our lots out. The Lord set it up that way. We have our own lots that the Lord set up that we have to play out. So we don't have our own free will. And the Lord either set you up to be the elect or he's setting you up to be a two-third. And I pray that me or even any brother, started from any brother, any brother in the truth, even to me, that we're not of that congregation of the two-thirds. That's scary, man. Sirach 39 and... See, Sirach 39, and let's just start at verse 17. Um, I'll start at verse 18. This is Sirach 39 and 18. It says, At his commandment is done whatsoever pleaseth him, and not, it says, And none can hinder when he will save. And none can hinder when he will save. So that's a perfect example. You don't have your own free will, man. Okay, you, you, you don't have your own free will. None of us do. We're all set up on the earth to do the Father's will. Okay? It says, verse 18, At his commandment is done whatsoever pleaseth him. You see that? So we're set on the earth. We, we came down here on the earth in this flesh to do the Father's will. Not our own will. Not our own free will. <coughs> we came to do the Father's will. We're about the Father's work. We're about the Father's business, as Yahweh Shai was. We're coming in the stead of Yahweh Shai, so we're about the Father's will also. It's about the Lord. It's not about us. It's about the Lord, man. It's about Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? It's not about us. It never was. This is Revelation 17, 17. This is Revelation 17 and 17. And it says what? For the Most High have put in their hearts, meaning minds, to fulfill his will. See that? So how can you how can you have your own free will when the scripture specifically said in the New Testament, this is Revelation 17 and 17. It says, For the most high have put in their hearts, meaning their minds, right? To fulfill his will. He put it in their minds to do his will. His will, the Lord's will. He put it in our mind, he downloaded it in our heads to do his will. Not our own will. This is in the scriptures here. Revelation 17, 17, for the Most High have put in their hearts, meaning their minds, to fulfill His will, and to, it says, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of the power shall be fulfilled. See, so that to do His will. So we all are doing, everything that we're doing on the earth, it's not our own will. We don't have our own free will. The Lord set it up. The Lord is even using Esau to fulfill prophecy. Esau don't know what he's doing. He's playing his own line out. Yeah, he's Edomites, right? The earth is given to them and the wicked. They're doing the Lord's will too because the Lord set them up. 
The Lord set them up to play the things on the left hand side. They, they're fulfilling prophecy and don't even know it. These heathens even playing their lots out. Esau even playing his lot out. Judgment's coming to Esau. He's causing all these wars and doing all that. He think that he's doing it because of his own free will. Nope. The Lord is using the Lord is setting him up to do that. The Lord is the Lord is using Esau to do that. Everything is being put, everything is being set up for the Lord. Esau is, is fulfilling prophecy. The Lord is using Esau to fulfill prophecy, man. That's why he's doing what he's doing on the earth. So his son can come back and tear this place up. So this place can be destroyed. This place needs to be destroyed. So now, <clears throat> enough about that. We're going to get into the two-thirds. Because two-thirds, those of you that have your own, that believe you have your own free will, if you don't repent, you're going to be destroyed. And I pray that none of us are those individuals, man. This is Sirach 13 and 8. Not Sirach, uh, Zechariah 13 and 8. It's like it. This is Zechariah 13 and 8. And it says, It shall come to pass, and in all the land saith the Lord, two parts therein shall cut off and die. And who are the two, par who are the two parts? The two thirds. The 66.6% .6 of Israelites. That's going to be destroyed, man. That's a lot of Israelites. So two thirds of them are going to be destroyed. But the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be delivered. But in the two thirds that were destroyed here, they're going to be brought back through the elect in the kingdom. The elect is going to have to bring back the two-thirds, but the two-thirds are going to be brought back through the elect. They're going to be regenerated, right? Reincarnation, reincarnated. So they're going to be destroyed here, but they're going to be brought back in the kingdom through the elect. So this is why we're hoping to be of the elect, man. We don't want to be in a congregation of the two-thirds because we know that there's a judgment coming for them too. If they don't, if you, if they don't, if you Israelites don't repent, you're going to be put in a congregation of the two-thirds. And that's something that you, 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 you don't want. Let's read that again. Zechariah 13 and 8. And it says, It shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. Who's the third? The elect. Okay, you had 144,000, which is all the elect men, but you got the men, women, and children under that, which is the elect. Also, the speckled birds, which is also included in that elect. Going to Revelation 7 and 9, the numerous multitude, okay? The speckled birds is also put in that as the elect. So we hoping to be of that number. But two parts, which is the two-thirds, they're going to be destroyed. If they, don't, if they don't repent, if our people don't repent, <laughs> they're going to get put in the congregation of two-thirds. This is Sirach 40 and 9. We're going to read a verse 10. This is Sirach 40 and 9. So this is what's going to be the judgment for the two-thirds. Which I pray or any pray for any brother out there. We all pray that we're not in the congregation of the two-thirds, man. Okay. Sirach 40 and 9. It says, death, it says, death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamity, famine, tribulation, and scourge. Verse 10. It says, these things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. And that flood is going to be that thermonuclear destruction. All right, it was a flood of water in the time of Noah. But this time it's going to be a flood, which is a flood of fire, which is going to be that thermonuclear destruction. And you don't want to be the congregation of two-thirds, because that's what's coming for them. It says it right here. These, it says, these things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. They're going to, yep, just like in the, just for an example, for in the time of Noah. They were wicked then. And there's only eight people that made it out of that, out of that, out of that, uh, 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 being destroyed in that water, right? Only eight people made it, which was Noah, his, his sons, his, uh, Noah's wife, and his wife's sons. Only eight made it out of everyone on the earth. That was the elect then. And that was a physical art. Now this one is a spiritual art, which the doors of mercy is closing. You want to still be on that art, you know, to earn your spot in the kingdom, to be of the elect. Or you, you're going to be an individual to be destroyed, man. You're going to be caught up in that flood. And this flood that's coming is going to be thermonuclear fire, man. The flood of fire. So you, you don't want to be caught up in that. It says, for these things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. You saw what happened in the time of Noah. So just imagine in this time now. That flood that's coming this time is going to be thermonuclear fire, man. That flood is going to be fire burning you. You're going to be burnt to ash, man. You're going to be destroyed with sulfur, which is that gunpowder, man. 
That's how Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed with sulfur. Right? That's a scary thing, man, being put in a congregation of the two thirds. This is Amos 8 and 10. Let's get that out. Start at verse uh, Amos 9. And we'll start at verse 8 and read to 10. This is Amos 9 and 8. And we're going to read to verse 10. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are upon the sinful kingdom. It says, and I will destroy it from off of the face of the earth. And this is what the Lord is going to do. If you are an Israelite, a so-called Negro, Hispanic, Native American Indian, you need to repent or you're going to receive a judgment of the Lord. You're going to receive judgment of the Lord, man. That's why the scriptures say in, uh, what's that, uh, I think it's Jeremiah, I think it's, uh, is it Jeremiah? It could be Ezekiel 35. I think it's Jeremiah real quick. Let me see. Let me get that on real quick. Let me go back to that. Jeremiah. No, it's 51. Yeah, it's Jeremiah 51 and 6. Jeremiah 51 and 6, and then we'll go back. It says, Flee out of the midst of Babylon, which Babylon is this place called America. Alright? Modern day Egypt, modern day Rome. This is the this is the Mary, uh the what's that uh, uh the the uh the, the clay, right? The iron and clay. So like the iron and clay, which is the revival of the Roman Empire, which is the divided kingdoms, okay? It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon, which is this place called America. It says, and to deliver every man his soul, it says, it says, be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense, and that her is talking about America, which is a recompense, all right? And it says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. That's talking about spiritually, not physically. Okay, so you you want to you want to flee out of the out of this place called America, especially because our people there in her iniquities they have drunken of that wine. Okay, they're embedded in a, in a, in a, in, a, uh, in a false uh, false religions, the politics, right, and the, uh, 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 the philosophies, right. They're lying in bed with the whore. You got the heathen nations doing it, but our own people is lying in bed with the whore. They don't want to come out of this place. They don't want to still be be uh, uh, have an American dream and. Trying to live lavish here, trying to make it here. And this ain't the place to try to make it here. Because this you trying to live the most lavish, successful life. This place is going to be destroyed, man. There's a judgment coming for this place. You don't want to be an individual to be caught up in the unawares. Right? As scriptures say in Luke 21 and 34. The cares of this life. Right? So this is what's going to happen, though, to the two-thirds. If they don't flee out of Mr. Babylon, they're going to they receive the judgment of the Lord doing the vengeance, doing the recompense, the vengeance, vengeance right? This is uh, Jeremiah 51 and verse 6. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Let's get that right now. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. All right? America, her iniquity, right? Because the whore, which goes to, uh, uh, what is that, Revelation 18, talks about the whore and her iniquities, right? Esau believe he can sweep the shit under the rug, everything is good, all the wickedness that he has done. But the Lord ain't forgotten it. It's still going to be a recompense due to this, to this, to this, to this devil, man. There's a judgment coming for this devil, man. The scriptures even say it. Revelation 18 talks all about that. Right? It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off of her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. You see that? This is the time that we're in. The time of the Lord's vengeance, man. Right? And it says, he will render unto her a recompense. A recompense. All right? Something that is due. Judgment is coming back. Judge, the Lord's going to cast judgment on this place called America. This whore. This whore is going to receive a judgment. Which is Babylon the Great. <coughs> Getting back to the main point. It's Amos 9 and 8. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord. It says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord power are upon the sinful kingdom. And I will destroy it from off of the face of the, of the earth. This place called America is that sinful kingdom. Right? And it says, Saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, save the Lord. See, so the Lord, he, He's going to destroy this place called America. And you two thirds that don't repent and you're embedded with the whore, you still lying down with the whore, you still uh, following the whore. Right? You don't want to repent. You want to still be dwelling on the earth, having your own free will. You're going to be destroyed with it. That's what's going to happen. 
verse 9 it says for lo I will command and I will shift the house of Israel among nations like corn as shifted sifted it says in a sieve it says yet shall ye not it says yet yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth verse 10 it says all the sinners of my people see all the sinners of my people talking about the Israelites two-thirds right it says shall die by the sword you're gonna be destroyed if you if you lie in bed with this horn, you won't come out of this place called America. You feel infatuated with this place. You 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 making you making trillions of dollars. You embedded in these marketing ideas. You embedded in these CEO uh, companies, and you just live in lavish. You just driving these jets and yachts and living like it's just a, the place to be. You have a, a, a thirty billion dollar home, and everything's just going fantastic for you. And you don't want to repent. You're an Israelite. You just want to still be embedded in this world. I mean, in this society, you're going to be destroyed. You would purposely be in wicked because you say you have your own free will and you willing, maybe you Jake's that's willingly sinning. Jake's that's just worldly. You're going to receive a judgment, of, you're going to receive judgment of the Lord, man. If you're not repenting, you stand embedded in this war, and you fall in the ways of this heathen, you're not coming out of the ways of this society, you just want to follow Esau and just enjoy the ride, well, you're going to be destroyed, man. Verse 10, it says, all, it says, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us but the Lord is going to destroy them man this is a this is a the Lord's going to establish his vengeance on the earth man the Lord's going to destroy this place called America man and this is why we are hoping to be of the elect man praying that we're not of the congregation of the two-thirds man we know we know what judgment is coming for this place we know what judgment is coming to this whore man we know that's why brothers is repenting daily Brothers is trying to get right, you know. These flesh make us go off. We're in mourn, we're in vexation. We got spirits messing with us every fucking day, man. Excuse my French. You gotta deal with spirits messing with your head. You're being put down to a low estate. But that's all what? That's all of our trials, of our tribulations. Right? The trying of our faith. This is uh second Edris 9 and 11. It says and it says, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place a, a place of repentance was a, was open unto them, right? Because right now we're in temporal we're in temporal grace. So we're able to repent to the Lord, right? Repentance is you know, we're able to repent to the Lord. You know, Yahweh Shai, he put his life online for us to be able to have this temporal grace. He went through that bruising, that affliction, bear all our sins, right? He he made the way for us. So now, right now, through the through the through through the through the uh, 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 through the grace, temple of grace, we're able to repent, right? But our people they're not repenting. Two thirds of them are not repenting. They don't, they don't care about this truth. They don't care about the Lord. They don't care about the Bible. They're embedded in the ways of, the, in, 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 in this society. They worship Esau as their Lord. They serve Esau. They believe they believe their money is their spiritual power. That's how Jake act. The two thirds do. They believe Esau's money is their spiritual power. They believe Esau's money is their is their way to be enough success of living living a, a, a immortal. Cause you got now you got Jake getting all types of surgeries and you know doing all types of things to stay living on the earth. They believe having the money and the gold is their spiritual power and their reparations. They believe money is their reparations. That's the perfect way to say it. They believe their money is their reparations. But this money ain't shit. A hundred dollar bill is only worth a cent, two cents. There's no value to the dollar. That's why they're bringing in that MOTB. That's why they pushing it so heavy, man. While everybody's being distracted with all these other things, Esau is pushing his agendas, man. He's increasing his agendas. He's pushing his agendas. They're popping up all up under your feet. This is 2nd Edris 9 and uh, verse 11. It says the day. It says the day that have loved my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, right? Because we're able to repent right now. Right now we're literally able to repent. The doors of mercy are literally open, so we are able to repent, right? And it says, understood not, but despised it. Our people don't want to repent. They believe they had their own free will. They don't believe they, they don't they don't believe they have to repent. They don't care to repent. 
long as I'm dwelling on the earth. That's it. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. This is these are the philosophies that they indoctrinated themselves with. That's why the scriptures say in uh, Isaiah 65 and 2. Let me get that out, man. We're gonna go back to that. This is uh, Isaiah 65 and 2. <clears throat> so I want to get that out. This is Isaiah 65 and 2. It says, I have spread out my hands all the day unto rebellious people, which are you Israelites. Right? It says, which walketh in a way that's not good after their own thoughts. They have their own thoughts, their own philosophies, right? That they've been indoctrinated with by Esau, man. They've been indoctrinated with philosophies, lies. All right, <clears throat> philosophies, lies, man. The second edge is nine, and I think I was at verse 11. Getting back to it again. Second edge is nine, 11. It says, and they that have loved my law, while they had not, what it says, it's like it. And they that have loved my law, while they have not yet liberty, it says, and when as yet, place of repentance was open unto them understood not but despised it it says the same must know it after death by pain and that's what's going to happen if you are an Israelite and you don't repent and you don't come out of the ways of this society because this place is going to be destroyed whether you believe it or not this place is going to be destroyed in thermal nuclear destruction and if you are Jake an Israelite that don't want to repent that don't want to get this truth you're going to receive a judgment of the Lord the Lord is going to destroy you man and I pray that none of us are those individuals man I pray that none of us are those individuals. I pray that the Lord keep the spirit on us, man. And we remain humble. We remain diligent. We remain examining ourselves. Repenting, man. Mercy. Lord does not take the spirit from us. Because we're literally in the last days. We're this close from being out of here, man. We can see it. We can see it, man. We just pray, man. We just pray every day. We pray it. Literally praying, man. Ask the Lord for mercy, man. Forgiveness. You know, because these fucking flesh have us go off. These flesh has us go off. And it's so vexing, man. Because it makes us go off. You know, that's why the scriptures say, uh, 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 a man that get up seven times. Because even though we fall, we got to get back up. And we have to repent. And we have to keep pushing, man. And stride along. And bearing this cross to the end. Trying to make it to the end. To be of that elect. To be of that number. To be of that elect. To be of that number, man. Because there's a death by pain that's coming. <coughs> Lord's gonna th the Lord gave us, gave, gave the Israelites time and time and time and time and time again to repent. And we chose not to repent. We chose to be wicked. Majority of, his, majority of us is choosing to be wicked. Lord gave us many times and times and times and chances and chances and chances. This is that last chance, man. The Lord ain't going to keep doing it over and over and over and over again. This is why this time, he's going to do a cleansing. It's either you're going to be getting down with the Lord or you're going to be being destroyed, man. You're either going to get down or you're going to have to lay down. That's what's going to happen, man. You're going to have to make a choice. All of us are individually in this truth, including me. I'm going to have to make a choice. It ain't about me, but I'm just saying, I, even me, I got to make a choice. You know? I pray that the Lord, the choice that he gives me is the right choice. Because we don't know what our lots are. None of us do. Let me keep saying that. We don't know what our lots are. <coughs> we don't know what our lots are. Let's read again. This is 2nd Edges 9 11. It says, And they that have, it says, And they that have loved my law while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not and despised it. Verse 12, the same must know it after death by pain. And that's what's going to happen because the Lord gave you a chance to repent. He gave us, He put us, He sent His only begotten Son down here. He gave His life up for us so we could be able to have repentance, so we could be able to repent. He was that sacrificial lamb for us to get grafted back to the Father. We had time to get right. This is the second. This is the uh, the second coming of the Lord that's coming, man. 
This is this. The Lord is going to come that second time. So we getting ourselves right. You should be getting yourself right. I'm trying to get myself right. Hard as I can, man. Because once the Lord comes back, that is it, man. And if you're an individual that's been wasting time, you've been an individual that's just been sitting around, you ain't been doing nothing, you've just been kicking back and just watching this truth as a reality, you got to get with the program, man. Get with the program. Get with the program. Even me, get with the program, man. Because time is wasting for no Israelite man or no Israelite woman. Time is wasting for nobody. The days is just fucking flying by out here, man. Every fucking day I go to work, come home. It's already, by the time I get off work, it's already another day. The days is just flying by. We're already in August, man. The days is just flying by more and more and more. And it, it seems like the days is going quicker now. Even quicker than they were last year. The days is just flying, 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 flying. We seeing all these rumors of wars taking place. Shit's just popping off. Things is collapsing. Things is going, going uh, things is, uh, 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 uh. Increase in inflation. Food prices is going up. Banks is closing. Banks is going out of business. Uh, uh, I just seen a CVS that I, I usually go to get my prescription from because you know, I just got to a car accident. And I, I was scheduled to go get my prescription. And I go to get a prescription, pick up my prescription, and the CVS is closed. At the where I signed my prescription to. Where the doctors signed my prescription to. So then I had to go to a whole nother different CVS. But it's just like, damn, man. It shows that things are taking place. Things are happening, man. Just think about it. You had an address that you was that you had reserved to pick up your prescription, and you think you're going to pick it up, and the shit is closed. It's out of business. So now you gotta go call your doctor and get another relocation to go pick up the prescription. This is the time that we're coming into. Went to go pick up, uh, I had to go pick up some money to, to, to pay a particular bill at a, at a bank that I usually go to. This is recently. Seen it there open two, three days ago. Go back over there to go, to go pick up some money to go pay a bill and the bank closed. It went out of business. Took the sign off, everything. So we can see things is happening. It's not normal for a bank to completely cut, shut down out of nowhere. It's not fucking normal to go to a CVS and the shit goes out as per permanently closed. The sign is off of the wall. It's letting you know what, where we in. 996 stories is out of business. It's letting you know where we in, what time we in. It's like the time of peace, man. It's not the time of peace. Let's get down to verse 22. This is second Edges 9 and 22. It says, Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. You see that? It says, Let the multitude perish therein. So the Lord is going to bring a recompense. He's going to judge this place. This place is going to receive a judgment. This place is going to receive a judgment, man. This place is going to receive a judgment, man. So we can, we can tell that these are the last days. Especially with the time going by the way it is. This is 2 Peter. This is 2 Peter. Uh, this is 2 Peter 2 and 9. 2 Peter 2 and 9. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. It says, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. So the Lord, this is why I say it's not of your own will. Everything is of the Lord, man. The Lord is going to, the Lord is going to protect his elect. The Lord is going to provide for his elect, especially in the time of Jacob trouble. The Lord is going to make a way for his elect. He's going to make sure they fed. He's going to make sure they thirst, they have their thirst of, of, of thirst of water. The Lord is going to make sure he's going to provide for his elect. That's why the scriptures say in Revelation, uh, was it 3 and 10? For those that kept the word of my patience, he will keep thee from the hour of temptation. The Lord's going to protect his elect. He's going to make sure his elect is good. 
But if you are the congregation of two thirds, the Lord is going to have you go through. He's going to have you suffer. He's going to have you damn near either either taking the damn see hit or, or or damn near being put to death. But the Lord is going to protect his elect. What I mean by put to death is leaving you out there on your own. Because a lot we know that we're going to be, you know, a lot of us going to have to die for the truth. Say, you know, a lot of us going to be taking those contradiction camps. I'm saying for you two thirds, you've been mocking the men of the Lord. You've been talking crap. You've been saying all this shit. You've been coming by trying to do debates and all that. You guys are going to be in anguish. As the scriptures say in Proverbs 1, and, uh, read it started from 22 on down. It says you're going to be in distress and anguish. Distress and anguish, man. And the Lord is going to laugh at your calamity. He, he's going to do that through his prophets, his men. They're going to laugh at you because you, 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 you mock the prophets. You refuse to get this truth. You rebelled against the Heavenly Father. You despise this truth when the Lord tried to reprove you so you could get this correction. You wanted to be a hard head. You wanted to be stiff-necked. So now the Lord is like, hey, I'm just going to leave you out there. So you you want to you want to you want to fear the Lord. Okay, you want to repent. You want to come back and repent. Come back, seek the Lord, repent, ask the Lord for mercy, man. Protect you, man. Because this place called America is going to be destroyed. Whether you believe it or not. Whether you believe it or not. This is 2 Peter 2 and 9. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. See that? Because I, I think about, uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. The Lord put uh, enough on you, but he'll just put enough on you to try you. That you may be able to bear it. Because the Lord does that. He, he's he's going to protect his elect. He's going to make sure they're good. He's going to protect his people. It says, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations. And to reserve the unjust unto the, unto the day of judgment to be punished. And that's what the Lord is going to do, man. The Lord has it all set up. You want to fear the Lord. You want to fear the Lord. This is John 17 and 9. St. John 17 and 9. <clears throat> this is St. John 17 and 9. It says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. See, I pray for them, but I pray not for the world, right? It says, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. See? So two-thirds are going to be destroyed. Not every single Israelite going to be saved, and not every single person of the world is going to be saved either. Only the elect is going to be saved. But the two-thirds, they're going to be destroyed, man. The Lord is going to cause, the Lord is going to put execution on these, on these two thirds. The ones that rebelled against the Lord, the ones that mocked the prophets, the ones that had disagreement with this truth, this 100% truth, right, which are spoken by the prophets, the men of the Lord, the elders, the apostles, of great millstone, those men had 100% truth, right, but you have all these other jakes out here, they rebel against, they rebel against the truth, you know, they either setting up and teaching their own doctrines, you know, they coming up with their own interpretations of the scriptures, misconstruing the scriptures, interpreting it wrongly, purposely at that. Here they go doing a lesson, and you still teaching what you want to teach. That's pride. That's why the scriptures say in uh, Proverbs, I think it's 16, 18. It talks about that. Proverbs, I think it's 16, 18. Pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That's scary. <clears throat> it's Romans 11 and 7. I love that precept, man. Romans 11 and 7. This is Romans 11 and 7. It says, What then? Israel have not obtained it that which he seeketh for. Right? Israel have not obtained it which he seeketh for. Right? They, they reject this truth. They despise this truth. They don't care for this truth. Right? It says, What then? Israel have not obtained it that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it. The elect, which is that salvation, man. Right? And the rest were blinded. The rest were blinded. The rest were blinded. Verse 8. It says, According as it is written, it says, The Most High have given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, ears that they should not hear unto this day. And that's the spirit of the Lord is having those in. I'm telling you, the Lord has everything set up. Everything is of the will of the Lord. Everything is of the will of the Heavenly Father, man. Okay? 
Everything is of the will of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Bashim Yahushai, man. It's of the Father's will. Men's goings are of the Lord. This is, I'm going to get that precept out because I don't think I got that precepts out. precept out. Uh, it's locky. Uh, it's James 4 and 15. This is James 4 and 15. It says, For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and, and do this or that. This is why we say Lord willing. I forgot to get this precept out earlier. Right, when we're going into own free will. This is why we say Lord's willing, because of the Lord's will. Everything do you do, everything that you do with throughout the day of your life in this flesh, whether it's to go to the plantation, to make it back home, whether you go into the gym, whatever it is that you're doing. That's of the Lord's will. The Lord ordained it and set it up for you to do that that day. It's of his mercy. He's the Lord has given mercy on you to be able to do that. You wouldn't be able to do that if it wasn't for the Lord. You won't be, you would not be able to do that if it wasn't for the Lord. James 4 and 15, for that ye ought to have saved, it says for, for that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. So it's Lord willing, man. Lord willing. Lord willing to you, much Messiah, Lord willing. It's of the Lord's will if he's going to do this or allow this to happen or allow that to go well or allow this or allow that. Everything is of the Lord, man. It's not of your own will. <clears throat> second Edris 15 and 4 this is second Edris 15 and verse 4 and it says for all the it says for all the unfaithful shall like it. for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness those that don't acknowledge this truth those that don't believe in Yahweh Yashai, those that don't acknowledge the Messiah don't believe in the Messiah right they don't believe in the Bible they believe the Bible is a white man book they believe that King James was a homosexual. They believe all these bugged out ass myth theories, man. That's going to cause your judgment. That's going to cause you to receive the judgment of the Lord. It says, for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. And that's a judgment that's coming, you two-thirds. You is unfaithful to the Lord right now. You're going to die in your unfaithfulness. The Lord's going to cause a rude of havoc judgment on you. That's why he's going to push that calamity. That's why the scriptures say, uh, tarry not to turn to the Lord. The scriptures say in uh, uh, Sirach 12 and 1, Remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not. Right? Because the Lord is going to execute a recompense. He's going to execute a judgment on this whore. And it's either you're going to get down with the Lord, or you're going to lay down. That's what he's going to do. Get this truth while you can. Tarry not to turn to the Lord. And I'll get that out. That's just on my spirit and Get that out, man. Terry, not to turn to the Lord. All right, you don't want to put off for that. This is uh, Sirach 5 and 7. It says, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day, for suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. And perish in the day of vengeance. And you don't want to be that individual, man. You don't want to be caught up in thermonuclear destruction. All because you was rebelling to, to turn to the Lord. To, to tarry to turn to the Lord. That's going to be a painful, that's a painful death, man. That's a painful death. Due to you tarry and not to turn to the Lord, now you're being destroyed, man. It's a painful death. It's a very painful death. It's a painful death, man. <clears throat> this is uh, Proverbs. Uh, Proverbs. Bear with me, sir. This is Proverbs 11 and 21. Proverbs 11 and 21. It says, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. See, the wicked shall go unpunished. The Lord's going to punish these people. Man. The Lord's going to punish you, you jakes that's rebellious, that believe you can do as thou will. You have your own free will. You're going to receive a judgment of the Lord. The Lord is going to destroy you, man, if you don't repent. 
You don't want to be an individual to be destroyed all because of your rebelliousness. All because you being stiff-necked, man. You want to repent and get the truth now. You want to repent and get the truth now, man. You want to repent and get the truth now while you still can, man. While the doors of mercy are still open. Verse 21, it says, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. And that's what's going to happen, man. This is why we are praying and hoping to be of the elect. Because the two-thirds, if you're in a congregation of two-thirds, you have a rude awakening that's coming as well. Don't nobody want to be destroyed in thermonuclear destruction, man. Romans 9 and 6. This is Romans 9 and 6. And it says, As though the word of the Lord hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Because you got Israelites that are of the flesh here, but they're not in the truth. They have a Gentile state of mind. They're cast out as a heathen right now. They are Israelites of the flesh, but they're cast out as heathen. But you got Israel that's, that's have woken up to the truth, that, that repented and came back into this truth. The Lord brought them back, right? Returned them back into knowing who they are. Now that we know that we're Israelites, now we're, 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 we're rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability, mainly having a faith, you know, examining ourselves with exhortation, getting ourselves right. Yes, we fall. We all fall. I fall, man. But I'm still trying to get right with the Lord. I'm still trying to seek his 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 mercy man seek seek his his seek that salvation seeking the lord studying from his prophets the elders and apostles of great millstone i still know and don't believe that those i still know and believe that those are the, men of the, lord. the hell no matter what had happened to me recently i still know that those are the men of the lord i'm not that's not going to change me man because shit at the end of the day the lord is going to save his elect through all of this I just pray to be of the elect man I just pray to be of that elect I just pray to man to be beamed up man and I pray you brothers and you sisters man I pray for you guys as well man you know cause don't nobody in this world don't nobody else in this world give a fuck about us in this world man so nobody in this world gives a fuck about us. The Lord gives a fuck about us. You know? That's why we seek this truth. That's why we embed it in these scriptures, man. We're having the Lord continually cleanse us with that washing of water by that word, man. Right? I think about that John 7 and 38. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow what? The rivers of living water, man. We're continually getting that, that living water, man. Being washed within our spirit. Continually, right? Romans 9 and 6. Not as though the word of the Most High have taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. So meaning what? You have Israelites in the truth, and you have those Israelites that are, that are Israelites in the flesh. They're Israelites. They are Israelites in the flesh, right? But they have a Gentile state of mind. They still live in the, uh, the ways of the heathen. They still cast out as that heathen, man. But see, if they repent and receive and be converted, which that word converted means to return, come back, and receive the washing of water of the word, get that cleansing, right? Like the scriptures say, Proverbs, I think it's one and five, a wise man will hear and will increase in learning. Then that's when the Lord is gonna, that's when the Lord is gonna come to you. That's when the Lord is gonna hear you. That's when the Lord is gonna put the spirit on you, man. He's gonna, he's gonna light that fire within your spirit. But if you keep just being a wicked, simple individual of this society, trying to live a lavish life, make paradise here, and like, like the elders and brothers say, uh, living your life like it's golden, then you are setting yourself up for destruction. Don't get me wrong, we have to work, we have to make a decent living to survive here, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't make it your main priority, man. Don't make this shit your main priority. Now you're leading yourself into a into a bad situation. This Hosea 4 and 6. This Hosea 4 and 6. 
It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And that's the two thirds of our people. They're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. They refuse to, 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 to get this truth. They refuse to hearken to this gospel, this good news, which is the gospel is the good news, this truth. They refuse to seek the Lord. They want to continually do what they want to do. They want to continually uh, live their lives wickedly on the earth. They have an impenitent mind, an impenitent spirit. Which that word impenitent means no regrets or no shame. They love living wickedly on the earth. And they're going to receive a judgment behind it. The scriptures say you reap what you sow. So if you sow wickedness, you're going to reap wickedness. If you sow in righteousness, you're going to reap what? Righteousness. But if you sow wickedness, you're going to reap wickedness. And that's the judgment that's going to come. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. You have rejected knowledge. That goes out Proverbs uh, chapter 1. Men of the Lord is consistently, the Lord is speaking through his prophets to get you to receive his truth. And you continually rebel against it. You continually do what you want to do. You don't want to do what the Lord say, do you? You want to continue to do what you want to do. I, go, I say God is love. God knows my heart. God knows my heart. You guys are preaching hate. You're a hate group. He died for everybody. He's every single color of the earth. He's white, purple, blue, orange, teal. He's maroon. Because that's what they'll say. He's even maroon. He has a maroon color. He's every single color. Y'all been watching too much Captain Planet. That's what that is, man. When you have all the rings, fire, earth, wind, gold planet. You're watching too much Captain Planet, man. That's why you believe that. You're indoctrinated with the 501c3 uh, madness. You're indoctrinated with that 501c3 chart of madness. Now you're indoctrinated with Captain Planet. Because that's what you think. You're thinking about Captain Planet, man. They had the white guy with the fire ring. They had the oriental lady. The oriental woman. There's an oriental woman on there. She had a, a, a damn water. You had, the, you, had the, you had a black dude that had a haircut like kid in play. <laughs> he had, I think, uh, uh, earth. And you had a white lady. Blonde head lady. She had wind. And they all together with all their powers of the ring bring Captain Planet out. And then besides, he's not Captain Planet, man. Okay? He's not every single color. Our Lord is not every single color. The Heavenly Father is not every single color. The Messiah, he's not every single color. Stop watching Captain Planet, man. Then you use John 3, 16, and they just mix it all up and try to form their own indoctrination. And that's a philosophy. That's not truth. That's a philosophy. That's why the scriptures say in, uh, I think it's, uh, what is it? I think it's Colossians 2 and 8. Let me see why you Because that's what the pastors is doing. But let me finish this. Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. I also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest in me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, and I will also forget thy children. That's what the Lord is going to do. You reject the Lord, now the Lord is going to reject you. Colossians, let me get this. Colossians two and eight. Yep. Because this is this is this is this is the majority of our people right now. Colossians two and eight. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And who's doing that? These wacky tacky uh, Christian pastors, Roman Catholic churches, right? These Baptists and Jehovah Witnesses, these seven day Adventists. You got these so-called women evangelists and women pastors doing it. You got these T.D. Jakes and Craft Low Dollars. Well, T.D. Jakes, I don't know if he's still preaching because of the shit that he did. But T.D. Jakes, Craft Low Dollar, Peter Popov, all these guys are all false prophets. They all deceiving the Lord's people. And everything they're doing is getting money out of them. Everything in this society that's under the 501c3 has to do with money. It has nothing to do with the truth. It has to do with gaining riches of this world, living richly in the delicacies. That's all this place is focused on. 
Everything in this world has everything to do. Everything in Babylon the Great is behind money. Everything. You can't even, you park your car out here. Let's say you go down to the strip. You park your car, it's a 5 to $10 fee just for parking. Just for parking. Everything has to do with money here. This is why this place got to be destroyed. Everything is just money, 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 money. Everything is a mammon. And that's why the Lord is going to destroy this place, man. Colossians 2 and 8. It says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Yahweh Shai. They are the rudiments of this world. Our people is embedded in the ways of this society, of this world. Not the Lord, man. They care less for the Lord. And that's why they're going to be destroyed. That's why they're going to be destroyed. So that's what's going to happen to the two thirds. We're going to go into Jacob Trouble. And after this, we're going to wrap it up for today. This is Jeremiah 30 and 5. Jeremiah 30 and 5. It says, For thus saith the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling of fear and not of peace. See that? We're in a time of fear right now. We're not in a time of peace, okay? Anytime you see Lord in caps, that's talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. So we're not in the time of peace. We're in a time of fear, man. Verse 6, it says, As you know and see whether a man doeth travail with child, wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his lawns as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness. And that paleness is feeble and weak. That's what that paleness is, the feeble and weak. That's what's going to happen. A lot of our people right now, or a lot of people in general right now, they live, in, they live in lavishly. They believe they live in a paradise. Everybody is Saturday. It's Saturday morning. So everybody's going here. Everybody's going there. Some people got 501c3 charter church today. Everybody's just living lavishly. Everybody's living happily ever after. Everything is just great for everybody. Right? But there's going to come to a time where everything is going to start falling apart. When they start bringing in the MOTBs, when they start establishing uh, 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 martial law, right? The New World Order. When they get rid of the fiat currency and come in with the digital currency, the CBDC, right? When people start losing their jobs and they're unable to work anymore. They're no longer able to work. They're no longer able to have a car or transportation. Uh, the food is going to skyrocket. There's going to be a famine of food when the shelves get fully empty. No longer able to get gas. Gas is going from fucking $3 a gallon to now $50 a gallon, $60 a gallon. Your job now is bringing in a, you can't work now. Your whole job is coming under another whole, a whole nother uh, 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 post order, or should I say a whole new rule with the company now. If you don't get this CHIP here, you can no longer be employed with this company. And that's not just with one job, that becomes all the jobs, the warehouses. If you're a person that's in pharmacy, the pharmacy. If you're a person that's in healthcare, the healthcare. If you're a person that work at a bank, bank tellers, right? You work at a gas station, you're doing security. You're working in high marking businesses. You, you work for the tow company. You're a construction worker. You're a teacher, whatever you are. You have to have that to be employed. You a doctor or a nurse in a hospital. You have to have that. Otherwise, you're going to be unemployed. Now, what are you going to do? You've been, you've been doing, you've been a nurse for damn near 20 years. Now you can't work because they force you to take, not force you, but it's making, it's being made, so like it's being made mandatory that you have to have that in order to work. Now, what are you going to do? You wind up quitting the job. So I'm not taking it. Months begin to go by. You're getting behind on car notes and insurance on your car. So now you got the tow company towing your car. Now the food in your home used to have stacked up. It's now starting to get empty. The shelves is getting empty. All the cans that you got, all the the fruit cans, the vegetable cans, all your shelves of food is starting to go empty. Now, you, if you got children, now they're getting hungry. They're crying to you every, every, every second, every day. I'm hungry. I don't have nothing to eat. I'm hungry. 
can't get a job because you gotta get you gotta get to see it. So now what's gonna happen? Fuck it, every man for himself. Now people are invading in people's homes and taking food from people. Betrayals is going on. You may be a person that say this individual here didn't take that MOTB. So now he lost everything. He got no food or nothing in his house. But his friend that he was close best friends with, he took it. So he got all this food and stuff in his house. What do you think that friend that was close with, that lost everything that didn't take it, but his friend that he was close with did take it. He gonna rob that man. He got kids that gotta eat. That's gonna be survival mode. Every person is gonna be caring about survival to make it to eat. So that's gonna cause what? Mayhem, civil unrest. That's that feeble and weak. Verse seven, it says, Alice for that day is great, so there's none like it. It is even a time of Jacob trouble. That's the time that we are coming into. That's the time that we're headed into. It's Jacob trouble. And in that time, all you're going to have to depend on is the Lord. You individually. I'm myself included in that. All we're going to have in that time, a person to depend on is the Lord. That's all who we're going to have in that time is the Lord. And you got to be fully persuaded in this noggin to know that the Lord is going to do it for you. Otherwise than that, you're going to lose the faith. Like the elders and brothers said many times, you're going to have individuals that's going to lose the faith. The individuals in this truth, they're going to lose the faith and they're going to give in to the system. That's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of Jesus' spirits in that time. And I pray that none of us are those individuals. I pray no brother in the truth is that individual. I myself included, I pray I'm not that individual. But you're going to have a lot of Judas Iscariots in that time. That's going to, that's, they're going to be revealed. They're going to pop out. They're going to be revealed. They're going to betray a lot of brothers in the truth. They're going to betray a lot of, a lot, there's going to be a lot of betrayal, man. Even with family members. You're not even going to be able to, you're not even going to be able to trust them. That's the hour of temptation there, man. You're going to have family members that's going to give in to the, to the system. And they're gonna tell, they're gonna rat you out and say, look, he ain't got it. We got it, but he ain't got it. It's gonna be betrayal. A lot of betrayal. <clears throat> Verse 7, it says, Alice for that day is great, so there's none like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Because this is gonna be a global thing. A global thing. Worldwide. All across the world, man. You're not gonna be able to escape this. You're not going to be able to escape this. Right? It says, but he shall be saved out of it. And this is talking about the elect. But the elect isn't going to be saved before Jacob's trouble. Right? They're not going to be saved before Jacob's trouble. And Jacob's trouble is not just on the heathen nations. All right? And we're not already in Jacob's trouble either. We're not. We got to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. That's in Daniel. That's in Daniel twelve and one. So you're going to be tried individually in this truth on your faith. All of us are. A lot of us is going to be put to death, and some of us is going to make it. You know, endure to the end. I mean, the, those that die in the truth is going to make it. But I'm saying, in this, and you know, through Jacob trouble, making it into the end. You're going to have those that's going to survive through, that's going to survive through Jacob trouble. The majority of us is going to be put to death. Because all of us ain't going to take that MOTD. You can't forget, you're going to be taken to the concentration camps. They already have tons and tons and tons of guillotines already in there. You know? So you already know the times that we come in there. It's Micah 2 and uh, 10. It says, Arise and depart. See, so the scriptures say, see, the word here is telling us in Micah 2 and 10. It says, Arise and depart. So you're supposed to separate from this society, man, when you come into this truth. Right? It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. This place called America is not your rest. This place is falling right before your face. This place ain't going to be here forever. This place is not going to be here forever. It says, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sword of destruction. It shall destroy you, even with a sword of destruction. So you don't, you don't want to be 
uh, treating this place as your resting place, you're going to be caught up in judgment by the Lord. You don't want that. So you, want, you don't want to be treating this place as your resting place. You don't, because you're going to be judged. You're going to receive a judgment of the Lord. You're going to be destroyed if you treat this place as your resting place. Get out that Daniel 12 and 1. <clears throat> Daniel 12 and 1. It says, and at that, it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. Michael who? Michael the archangel. It says, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. So there's going to be a time of trouble. See that? A time of trouble. And that's what's coming. A time of trouble. Jacob trouble. Right? And it says, such as never since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. So we got to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. So you people that's teaching that Jacob trouble is only going to be upon the heathen nations, you're going off. You're going off with that. You're going off with that. If you're teaching that we're already in Jacob trouble right now, right now is Jacob trouble, you're going off. You definitely going off of that. And if you're an individual that's teaching that we're going to be saved before Jacob trouble, you definitely going off. Yes, you going off of that. You you definitely going off of that. So we got to go through Jacob trouble first before we can be saved. Before we can be saved. Revelations 3 and 10 which I, read, I want to read that earlier, hold it, but I want to get it out Revelation 3 and 10 it says because thou hast kept the word of my patience who kept the word of the Lord's patience the Israelites the men of the Lord, the prophets that's who kept the word of the Lord's patience the prophets, the men of the Lord the Israelites those that are embedded in this truth those that believe in this report we all believe in this report. We believe in this. We know that great millstone Israelites have 100% truth. We know that the Lord is dealing with those individuals. We believe in a report. We believe in this truth. We believe in Yahweh Bashem Hashem. We believe in the prophecies. We have faith. Revelations 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole come upon all the world. So this is going to come upon the whole world, man. The Lord is going to keep his the Lord is going to keep his elect from the hours of temptation. He's going to make sure that we're fed. He's going to make sure that we're, we're that we that we receive that thirst. The Lord is going to be here for us. He's going to guide us. He's going to protect us. He's going to guide us through. But you got to be fully persuaded in your mind to know that, though. That's the thing. That's the thing that take the, the cake there. That's why it's called uh, the hour of temptation. Because you're going to be tried on what your faith individually. You're going to be tried on your faith. It says, "Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth." And this is what is coming, man. The hour of temptation, man. Revelations 12 and 12 and it says therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them it says woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath but who's that devil Esau Edom the central bankers the higher power elites so called white man he's that devil right it says woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil has come down onto you having great wrath. Right? It says, because he knoweth that he had but a short time. He knows that his time is almost up. 
his time of his rulership, the time of him ruling is almost up. And he knows it. That's why he's pushing all these agendas. Right? You see all these wars, rumors of wars taking place. Esau knows his kingdom is falling apart. That's why he's doing what he's doing. That's why he's pushing forth his MOTB. I've been seeing a lot of brothers going to the MOTB. This past week, a lot of brothers went into the MOTB. The elders, the brothers, all went into the MOTB. Because what? What are they doing? They're measuring the time diligently in itself. They believe in that report. They're blowing the sound of the trumpet. Right? They're those righteous newscasters giving out that report. Giving the warning out like the Lord said in Ezekiel 3 and 17. Give them warning of me. Be a watchman. They're being those watchmen. They're being those watchmen. Okay? So Esau know that he had but a short time. That's why he's pushing forth all these agendas. He's causing all these things to happen and take place. But the Lord is using Esau to do that though. He's pushing forth his agendas. He's causing all the havoc. The Lord is using Esau to do that. Esau is fulfilling prophecy for the Lord. He don't know what he's doing, man. The Lord is using Esau to do that. He's a controlled robot doing what the Lord is putting on him to do. So Esau know that he had but a short time. That's why he's doing that. Let's read it again. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the habitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. And it says right here, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down with great wrath. That's going into that MOT, they go into the uh, New World Order. So like the New World Order. I'm about to say the MOTB. That's partially of it. But that coming in with that wrath is going to be that military, man. That New World Order, martial law. Okay? He's coming in with that great wrath. Coming in like a flood, coming in with that great wrath. That's that, that's that martial law. Gonna come in with his stormtroopers, man. Kicking down doors and tying people up and putting them on them buses and taking them to those concentration camps. Because that's what's gonna happen. And we can see that happening. That's what's gonna happen. So you wanna you wanna you wanna fear the Lord right now. Get right with the Lord and ask the Lord for mercy and protection. We're going to need the Lord in the time of Jacob's trouble. This is 2nd Edges 2 and 27. Let me get this out. 2nd Edges chapter 2 and uh, 27. Second Edges 2 and 27. It says, be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. See that? So everyone else around you is going to be bugged out. They're going to be in that perplexity spirit, not knowing what to do, how to react. They're just going to be all over the place, bugged out. While the men of the Lord is sitting there like, I knew that this was going to happen. I'm just gonna give it to the Lord. While everybody else is ah, ah, I don't know, ah, ah, grabbing their throats and necks and head, not knowing what to do. Man, the Lord is gonna be sitting there like, I already knew this was gonna happen. Just gonna give it to the Lord. Everybody else is gonna be pulling their hair out, grabbing their head, ah, doing all that. And you could have been got the truth years ago. Should have came and got this truth years ago. Just have to give an example out for that. <coughs> this is Matthew 24 and 21. This is Matthew 24 and 21. It says, For then 
shall a great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, right, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. You see that? It says, for this shall be a tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor even shall be. So this tribulation, which is Jacob trouble, is going to be worse than any particular time period in history. This is going to be a global thing. Just give an example, going back to that Jeremiah 30, right? You ain't going to be escape Jacob trouble. You got to, we got to go through Jacob trouble. You ain't going to be able to go from here and go, go south or go south and take the underground railroad to come to the east. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Let's read that again. Verse, this is Matthew 24, 21. It says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. See that? So this is, this is, this is, what we're headed into is going to be worse than any particular time period in history. This is going to be a global thing, man. A global thing. And it's going to be up to you to cry out and depend on the Lord. Because He's going to be the one to get us through. Let me get this Revelation 13 now, and we'll wrap it up. It's starting to get hot. This is Revelation 13 and 15. It says that he called, it says that he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast should, should be killed. And what's that image? His beast system. That's that image. His beast system. And the beast, that's talking about the NATO. Alright? The, the modern day Roman Empire today. That's that beast, man. Alright, the EU, the European Union, known as the EEC, the European Economic Community. Which is now known as the NATO. Right? It says that he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. And that's the he, the central bankers. Right? That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Verse 6, it says, And he caused the all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. See that? So this is going to be the time where they're going to push those agendas where you're going to have to have the MOTB to sustain in this society. And it's going to be from the richest man on the earth to the poorest man homeless on the street. It's going to be required to take that MOTB. And if you take that MOTB, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking the MOTB. Because when you go into the meaning of that word mark, it goes into G54A, which is karagma, a stamp or imprinted mark. You go into the etymology the meaning of that word karagma is G5482, which is karaks, a pale snake or palisade. You go into the entomology of, of uh, karaks, it goes into G1125, which is grapho, which is a written tablet, a written material on a tablet or written material. This is a physical thing. This ain't spiritual here. This is physical. Right? Read that again from the top. This is Revelations. This is Revelation 3 and 16. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their forehead. So if you take that MOTB, you're going to be destroyed. Verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. You see that? Verse 18. It says, Here is wisdom. Let him have understanding. Count the number of the beast. For it is the number of, of a man, and his number is 603 score 6. Now, when you go into the interliner, go into the Greek grammar of, uh, uh, was it 300, 603 score 6? Was it? Yeah, 603 score 6. That goes into uh, G 5516, which is high size thickness. When you go into the entomology of high size stigma, which is G4742, that goes into stigma. It says a mark pricked in or branded upon the body, right? To the ancient uh, oriental usage, slaves and soldiers bore the name 
or the stamp of their master or commander, branded or pricked, cut into their bodies to indicate what master or general they belong to. And there were even some devotes who stamped themselves in this way with the token of their gods. See, so that's a physical thing there. That, that uh, mark that's in uh, Revelation 13, that's a, phys that's a physical thing there. It's not spiritual. Now there is a spiritual mark, which goes into uh, 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 Ezekiel 9 and 4, that Tawa there, the Tawa, right, which is that spiritual mark, which is which is that sealing of the elect, which is mentioned in Revelation 7 and 3 through verse 4. The sealing of the elect, the elect being sealed, right, knowing of what? The name of the Lord, which goes to Revelation 14 and 1. But Revelation 13, that's a physical thing there. That's not spiritual. That's not spiritual. This is Revelation 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his, in his forehead or in his hand. So notice it said hand there. If you get the MOTB implanted in your, in your right hand or your left hand, you get it implemented anywhere in your body, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking the MOTB. There's no repentance for taking that. You take that MOTB, you get it implemented or inserted anywhere in your body, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to be condemned. There's no repentance for taking it. Yes, you're going to be destroyed if you take that MOTB. Regardless if you believe it or not, you take that chip, you're going to be destroyed. You, 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 there's no repentance for taking that MOTB. Verse 10, it says, The same shall drink of the wine of wrath of the Most High, which is poured into the cup of his indignation. And that indignation, it means wrath, anger, righteous anger of the Lord. So you take the MOTB, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to feel the wrath of the Lord. There's no repentance for taking the MOTB. It says, And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone and presence of the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the lamb and that lamb there is referring to Yahweh Shai because Yahweh Shai and the angels they're going to return on the earth Yahweh Shai is going to return on the chariot with the angels and they're going to tear stuff up the scriptures mention that in Revelation 14 14 on down it talks about the angels and Yahweh Shai coming in like a sharp sickle that sharp sickle is a garden it's a similar it's a garden tool right a sharp sickle a sickle is a garden tool you know in a time of harvesting they used to use the tool to cut down in the time of harvest cutting down the wheat it's going to be a time here when the Lord is going to make that return in the time of that harvesting. When the, when the earth is ripe for the Lord to do that harvesting, which is that judgment. He's going to tear this place up. This place is going to be destroyed and thermonuclear destruction, regardless if you believe in it or not. Revelation 14 and 11, it says, In the smoke of their torment ascended up to heaven forever. It says, like, it says, In the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. This is after America is destroyed in thermonuclear destruction. This part right here in the beginning of this precept. The smoke is going to ascend up forever and ever because this place called America is going to be destroyed in thermonuclear destruction. Right? And it says, And they have no rest nor day. It says, And they have no rest day or night, Salakia, who worship the beast in his image. And whosoever receive the mark of his name. So you're going to have those that's going to take, they're going to be marked with the name of Esau. They're going to have Esau's name. And how do you get Esau's name? By taking the MOTB. Taking his, taking his beast system. Applying to his beast system. Taking that image. Applying to the system. You comply to the system, you're going to be destroyed. So that's being marked with Esau's name. You're going to have those that's going to be marked with Esau's name. But the elect, they're going to be marked with the Lord's name, which is that sealing. They're going to be sealed in their foreheads. They're going to receive the sealing of the Lord. But this here, where it says marked of his name in Revelation 14 and 11, that's talking about, sorry, that's talking about Esau being marked with Esau's name, which is his beast system, complying to his system. So again, this Revelation 20 and 4, I wrap it up with this. So again, you take that MLTB, you're going to be destroyed. There's no repentance for taking the MLTB, man. All right? There's no repentance for taking it. This is Revelation 20 and 4. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai. 
and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped his beast, neither his image. Right, because that goes to a lot of us that's in this truth. We're not going to take, a lot of people are not going to take that MOTB because we know what that MOTB is. We know that that's against the Lord. We know that the Lord is against that. Okay? We know that the Lord is against that, man. Okay? So we're not going to take that. So we're going to be what? Beheaded. We're going to be guillotined. We're going to be put to death for not complying to the system. And guess what? We're dying for the Lord. That's a righteous act. You're dying for the Lord. So we're going to be rewarded for that. You don't want to take, you don't want to lose the faith and give in to the system. Because now if you take that and comply to the system, you're going to receive the judgment of the Lord. It says, read from the top, Revelation 20 and 4, And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh Shai, and for the word of Yahweh. It says, in which had not worshipped the beast in his image. They didn't comply to the system. They didn't bow down to the system. They didn't take that MOTB, right? It says, neither, received, neither had received his M-A-R-K upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Yahweh a thousand years. You see, and that's the reward. You, 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 you doing a righteous act by dying for the Lord. Okay, that's a righteous act. You're dying for the Lord. You didn't, you didn't take that system. That, that you didn't take that M R that M A M A R K. You didn't take that C hit, man. You, you, you had the faith unto the end, and you died. You died in the Lord. That's a righteous act. So you're gonna be rewarded for that. So you don't want to take that that M O T D, man. So, hey, man, we're going to wrap that up with that. I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Yahweh Kakadash. Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. There's one true name, is Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, meaning coming in the name. Ba means coming in. Ha means the. Sha means name. Waka means spirit. Kodash meaning holy. Double honors to the elders and the apostles, the bishops who rule well and teach well. Double honors to Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, first and foremost. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brothers that are scattered abroad. Christian forth this word in truth and sincerity. And shalom to you, sincere sisters that listen to silence as the scriptures command you to do so. I am the brother Mashiach of The Lord willing, this was a blessing, edifying lesson. And on to the next one, to the next time. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.